Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk about autoimmune disorders. All right, so we're mainly going to focus on the big five, uh, psoriasis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, ankylosing spondylitis, and psoriatic arthritis. Uh, this also applies to, I would also say, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, the basis for these disorders is genetic. And so, let's say you're, you're born and you have this gene that's for rheumatoid arthritis. Now, you don't have any symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis because the, the gene is turned off, essentially, okay? And you won't have any symptoms at all unless that gene is, boom, turned on. And the more of those genes throughout your body that are turned on, the more symptoms you're going to have. And so, what happens is, your inflammatory stress starts rising, okay? And you're cruising along, not enough to turn that on. You might have some other things from the inflammation, maybe a, a little diabetes or hypertension's developing or something like that. You have this low level of inflammation, and in part, because your vagus nerve's job is to try to control inflammation of the body. So as long as your vagus nerve is functioning, your, your gene remains off. Now, what happens is, we're now learning that in, in the five big uh, autoimmune disorders that the vagus nerve fails. So the mechanism that's controlling your inflammation no longer functions properly and it allows elevation to boom, turn up to a higher level and then bang, on turns on your, your gene. That's how you get rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and ankylosing spondylitis. Okay, there's studies in each of those showing vagal nerve failure prior to the onset of symptoms. Now we have these very, very potent drugs we're now using, these immune modulators that block like tumor necrosis factor or interleukin-6 or interleukin-1. And they, so you have the genes turned on, you have this high level of inflammation. And what they're doing is they're driving down inflammation, okay? That directly can just help the tissues that are being adversely affected. But what they're finding in some cases as they're driving this down, these genes are able to turn off. And there is now a growing sense that they're starting to hunt for the ability to not just lower inflammation in your symptoms, but to actually create a genetic remission for these. Now, I've seen this using our protocol uh, quite frequently in people with uh, Hashimoto's. So Hashimoto's, uh, you can measure it. So it'll, it's an inflammatory disorder. It affects the th thyroid gland. And you have these antithyroid antibodies produced from this autoimmune disorder. And what will happen is, as they're on the protocol, these antibody levels will decline and essentially go to zero. They'll disappear. And then the patients report that their thyroid gland seems to be recovering and that they need less and less and less thyroid hormone and then suddenly they're off. And the thyroid has a tremendous capacity to rejuvenate itself, right? We've seen people with great big thyroid glands called goiters and things like that. So it can definitely grow. And um, so we see it in that case firsthand, but that's really where it's at for these, these big autoimmune disorders, which are growing in frequency and occurring in younger and younger and younger individuals. So if you have an autoimmune disorder, you need to focus on your inflammatory stress. And that's fish oil, olive oil to block the inflammatory, omega-6s in the food supply. You got to work on balancing your gut bacteria with rifaximin either on monthly basis or whatever, or even just continual basis for a while to see if you can drop your inflammation enough to get you off these immune modulators. Uh, and then uh, find somebody who can help you with uh, electric vagus nerve stimulation in the ear. And I mean, these immune modulators are selling for these things. They're very effective, but remember they can trigger lymphoma, cause a bunch of bad uh, infections. I had a gentleman here recently, he ended up having disseminated tuberculosis from Remicade. And so, and they can all cause this kind of risk. So, uh, if you have an autoimmune disorder, it's being driven, it's genetic, but it's not genetic in that you can't turn it back. It's genetic in, in that these genes are turned on by inflammation 
And likewise, they're discovering if you can lower inflammation, you can turn these genes off. All right. So I hope that's useful to you to understand really what's going on. Uh, otherwise, everybody have a great day. Bye.